uh, has come to light in, in the, the last couple of weeks. But uh, and I've been you know, looking more closely at, at the, the details of the book and, and some of the, you know, the narrative of what happened around it. And I, I go back to the Stephanopoulos uh, interview and I kind of see what he was saying because the Clintons are both lawyers and they're so smart that maybe the reason they're above the law is because they always stay like a millimeter above what you can actually prove. And, 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 they, and he, Stephanopoulos, you know, God knows what he was thinking, but he was right to say that to you, that in the entire book, it's so damning and it smells so bad and it's so obvious what was going on, but there's nothing there that'll stick. Is there? Well, I think it, I, well, I think if the, you know, the hope that, that, that Clinton, Clinton critics had that there's an email out there that says, you know, I will do this for you in exchange for that money, that sort of email is not going to exist. The Clintons are too smart um, to put things in writing in that regard. That said, uh, and I responded in this way to George Stephanopoulos at the time, you know, the expectation that, that me as a journalist, as a reporter, using public source information is going to prove that a crime is committed uh, is, I think, a ridiculous standard. And what, what I encourage people to do, really, is look at the recent prosecutions for political corruption in the United States. Uh, former governor down in Alabama, uh, Siegelman, who's in jail. Uh, of course, you have the case involving the former governor of Virginia, which the Supreme Court has has said needs to be retried, Senator Menendez in New Jersey. Um, in none of those cases do you have a smoking gun or a quid pro quo. So it's a little bit of a misnomer when Stephanopoulos and others say that you have to show a quid pro quo, because that certainly has not been the case in least recent political corruption cases. Peter, it's, it's unique. And to have most presidents, they get done, right? And then their, their influence slowly wanes. Uh, as as it, you go ahead in time, that didn't happen this time because we, you know, suddenly his wife's a senator, suddenly she's secretary of state, now she's a president. So his price, just you know, through nothing that they, I don't, I'm not saying they, they, it was deliberate, but it, it went up. But but one interesting thing that that occurred to me, we got a politician in New York who was, he went to lunch and he sent his guys out to get him lunch. All right, so they came back. Gave him lunch, and then he billed uh, the taxpayers to reimburse these guys. It's like $6,000. This guy is in a, a heap of trouble. He's in a heap of trouble for doing it. I mean, Bill became a honorary chairman of this laureate university and, and in four or five years made $17 million personally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and no one and cares. Laureate... And, and the, the Washington, no one's on this. No one cares. Well, I, I, I might disagree with you a little bit that no one cares. I agree with you. It has not gotten the attention uh, that it deserves. Uh, but you're exactly right. I, I mean, the level of sophistication with which the Clintons operate is at a very high level. Uh, but still, if you are trading favors for money, it is still criminal, regardless of under what guise you do it. And I think the speaking fees are a huge problem for the Clintons. I mean, you're quite right. Every ex-president from Eisenhower uh, to George W. Bush has hit the lecture circuit, and every single one saw over time their speaking fees going down. In the case of Bill Clinton, he was getting about $150,000 to $200,000 a speech, which is a lot of money. But when his wife becomes Secretary of State, literally overnight, those from overseas speaking opportunities skyrockets. It triples overnight. And places like Nigeria and Russia, who had not sponsored a speech before, suddenly are lining up to pay these inflated speeches. That's something that deserves investigation. And look, it, you know, argue it, it wasn't intentional upon the case of the Clintons. That doesn't really matter. I mean, the Clintons are, have been called a lot of things by friends and opponents. Naive is not one of them. They know exactly what's going on. And that's why I've called for an independent counsel to investigate these matters so we can yeah. get to the bottom of it. Peter, they, you know, they've, if they were in the private sector, I would say these people are the greatest business people in the world because you couldn't do the you couldn't get contributions from foreign entities. That's something we've never allowed. You can't do that. But with the foundation, you can. 
You usually don't have a philanthropic organization doing public works, acting like a, a public company. Suddenly, Bill Clinton had the stated intention of, of combining the private sector, you know, with, with uranium companies or Haitian uh, construction companies. You combine everything they did. It was pure genius. But I just feel like, you know, we, the, the, the American public has kind of been been played, and government has kind of been used. To, to sort of line the pockets of politics, which is not why they're supposed to be there. No, I, I agree with you. Look, and I've said this, this is not just about the Clintons. This is a widespread problem. I, I wrote a book a couple of years ago, Throw Them All Out, about insider trading on the stock market by politicians. Uh, book came out. We did a story on 60 Minutes. Congress and President Obama signed this great bill, the Stock Act, which, you know, eight months later, they basically gutted in the dark of night. So this is not just unique to the Clintons. What I would say is unique to the Clintons is precisely what you mentioned earlier, which is the foreign money. You know, we know the influence game. We know businesses, labor unions, et cetera, donate to, camp to campaigns and candidates because they want access, they want favors. But it's been an American game because foreign entities can't give to political campaigns. With the Clinton Foundation, that has changed completely. You've got oligarchs in Russia and Nigeria making massive pledges, millions of dollars right. to and the Clinton him Foundation. Him and then giving him a, paying him to give, to give a speech for $650,000 or whatever. Personally. That's right. So I think if we're worried about a PAC contribution of $10,000 from an American company gaining access, we darn well better be concerned about access that millions of dollars are getting a foreign oligarch to our political leaders. Peter, what's the culpability that you would assign to the State Department in this? Because after Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State, they were supposed to clear all outside foreign donations with the State Department. Did they just not do that? Or did the State Department turn a blind eye? No, that's a great question. Um, I think the State Department, by and large, uh, worked with what information it was given. The problem is, is that the Clinton Foundation, for one reason or another, and we can speculate, I think it was very much intentional, didn't share all that information with the, with the uh, State Department. So they couldn't act on it. I mean, consider a very basic thing. Barack Obama, in his wisdom, when Hillary Clinton was appointed Secretary of State, says, you, need, you can do this, but you've got to agree to a couple of things. One is complete transparency. You need to give us the names of all donors to the Clinton Foundation on an annual basis. Well, we now know they didn't do that, that there's more than 1,000 donors uh, overseas that they have not revealed. You know, what can the State Department do if they're not given that information? So that's very, very troubling. So is there a level of transparency that would be suitable for the foundation going forward, or do you agree with calls from Donald Trump and others that the only way that this would be acceptable is to shut the foundation down altogether. I think you need to shut the foundation down, and I think we need to have legislation going forward that prevents this from happening in the future with anyone else. I just don't think it's appropriate, whether you're Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, whether you're somebody else as Secretary of Defense, to have a private foundation where you're taking foreign yeah. money hey, or Peter. for a member of Congress. For that matter. Well, I have you here, and, and I, you know, I, I think we may need to have you back. I, I don't know if on, on retainer. You're not going to be on George's show again, I don't think. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You, know, you don't need to leave your phone open for that. But it, things keep coming out. So now we got a lot more stuff is is going to hit in September or October, whenever it is. We now know why the private server was so important, obviously, because a lot of this stuff I wouldn't want. And we know why. It, what's a bleach thing called? What is that called? Bleach. Uh, uh, it's like a, a digital shredder. Uh, there's some program yeah. that they. Do you do you think that there is something there that I just don't think there is that it, no matter where it is, I just think they're too smart. I don't think there's any way you're going to be able to see a quid pro quo clearly because they're both lawyers. Yeah, you're not going to see a quid pro quo because they don't function that way. But I've seen emails that have not been released that are coming out. Uh, you've got two groups, Judicial Watch, Citizens United, who've been litigating to get these released for years. Uh, you are going to see more emails about high access for Clinton Foundation board members when it comes to contracts involving Haitian reconstruction and other entities. No, it's, you're going to clearly see that if you gave money or were connected to the Clinton Foundation, you got access and you got favors. Um, whether it involves directly Bill or Hillary Clinton, you're not going to see that in the emails. Right. But I think the evidence is going to be very damning. Well, you're, you're pretty nice to, to, your, to the other people in media. You say that they have, there has been an actual effort by the Times and the 
the Washington Post. I, I don't know. We, we had a couple of Washington Post guys on. They, they broke the story that, that Trump doesn't read that much. Uh, I'm not sure that they're I'm not sure that they're on this uh, this this case yet, but maybe with you know hope springs eternal. Peter Schweitzer, thank you. I hope to see. You.